Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is our eyes news analyst, Emmanuel Great Malabite Hifini. Good morning, <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Ayo. Good morning. Welcome back. Rufai Oseni. Well, the boy that yes. I missed the GKS interview. Yes, hey. it was a great interview hey. with the GKS president, Since Brother Tavana Felix Apu. Ekundayo. Oh. I did he spoke call. well. Yes, he spoke well. Maybe one of these days you people will bring girls to Guru Maharaji. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, well, no, just leave, 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 leave that alone. <laughs> well, shout out to the GKS president, Brother <laughs> Felix Ekundayo. I don't know. I know he's preparing for the takeoff of the Feast of Tabernacle. Yeah. But let's come to the review. We start with this day Nigeria's newspaper of record. Where else to start than the story above the masthead? The window story, we call it. Finally, Dangote refinery set for production. Get first one million barrel crude oil feedstock. Well, we all say hooray to this. But I'm just waiting to drive into the filling station and say, please, let me have Dangote refined petrol fill my tank. But of course, this is a milestone, but given the fact that uh, we, we've had some shifts of dates just because uh, the NMPCL uh, has not been able to deliver feedstock to the Dangote refinery, which many expect should be the game changer in the way we sell the way we deal with our oil resources. Because at full blast, we should be supplying a number of African countries petroleum products. All those countries that have been enjoying our subsidized fuel, let them come and buy now from Dangote Refinery. But to do that, we also have to meet the local demands. But the refinery has the capacity. So one million barrel stock delivered. I hope the arrangement is watertight in such a way that the flow will continue. And we don't have the Nigerian factor of, oh, there is a glitch somewhere. And as such, there is a break in, I don't want to say transmission. <laughs> but we expect that this arrangement will be watertight so that the flow will continue. The Dangote refinery will produce at optimum capacity, nothing below the optimum capacity. And the, this country, this great country, Nigeria, will see the difference. Going forward, utilizing our oil resources, not just exporting crude, because refining and exporting will mean this country making more money from the oil resources. And all the figures uh, already stated there, the ship, MTOT is owned by, of course, tra Trafigura, and the quantity, exact quantity delivered, 999,748 barrels. That's the exact quantity delivered. And of course, that crude came straight from Agbami crude grade. It's from uh, Chevron's terminal. Of course, the NMPC is the one delivering that, of course, coming via the supplier, Shell Trading, and of course, we just look forward to having the first output in our filling stations. We are now seeing cues again. We just hope Dangote Refinery will solve all this problem once and for all, and we sustain it with the four refineries, one coming on stream early next year, as promised by NMPCL, others to follow. We should put all this fuel scarcity and underutilization of our God-given resources in this country. I just move over to other stories. Now, the lead story, Tinimbu, every commitment to clear FX backlog will be fulfilled. Sanusi says president shouldn't be petroleum minister, insists NMPC must account for dollar inflows. Yes, NMPC has been described as the most opaque organization Let's say in Nigeria, not, we don't want to say the most opaque oil company in the world. I'm sure they will also be, be contesting for that title, but it's not a title anybody should be proud of. How can NMPC make its operations more transparent? That is what Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi, 
is saying. Now, opposes removal of Amcon levy, declares banking sector regulation a necessity. Chikobi, yes, that's Mustafa Chikobi. Era of regulations without consultation should end. Cardoso regulation key to sound financial system reduction of operational excesses. Well, I think the long and short of this matter is that Central Bank Governor Yemi Kadusu should carry along the banks as they make these policies, not just dumping policies through the media on the banks. That in itself creates some chaos and people, you see people scampering, taking all kinds of decisions that will affect the sector down the line. I think that message is very clear enough. Now, if we look at the other story, showing compassion, Shetima leads federal government delegation to visit Kaduna bomb victims, promises rebuilding. Well, other newspapers have this story as a lead. The Punch newspaper, Kaduna bombings. Federal government vows to punish culprits. Arewa consultative forum demands GOC's removal. Federal government promises to unravel causes of bombing, rebuild affected community, Defense headquarters plead curb accidental bombing with artificial intelligence. U.S. Armed Center tells military. ACF demand probe. Now, the Nigerian Tribune newspaper also that story. Kaduna drone strike. The guilty will be punished. Tinimbu vows. Why the Nation newspaper also leading with the story. Tinimbu vows punishment for error bombing culprits. While the Vanguard newspaper, Kaduna Error, we will be 100% sure before bombing targets, defense headquarters giving that assurance. While the Daily Trust newspaper, still on this story, Kaduna killings, not a mistake, says Gumi. Sheikh Gumi is the one making that assertion. But the other story is there. Army's attack against Air Force advice. Sources. Officers grumble over lack of synergy between services. We have learned our lessons, our operations remain joint. Defense headquarters. Tinimbu vows to punish anyone found uh, culpable. Well, the, uh, I don't think there's any need to whip up unnecessary sentiment. Shegumi saying, no, it wasn't a mistake. It couldn't have been deliberate to kill uh, Nigerians by the Nigerian uh, army. I don't think it was deliberate. I want to stay on that side. Uh, so we shouldn't heat up the polity by saying it wasn't a mistake. But what we perhaps we should take from the Daily Trust story, army attack against Air Force advice. Could that be the case? And the other one, officers grumbled over lack of synergy between services. In recent times, there's been better synergy. Perhaps this incident is just an unfortunate one that is trying to dent that synergy. And not many people have that information that when the Nigerian military had that encounter with bandits in Niger State and those injured soldiers were being flown out of the area and the plane, that helicopter came down and bandits attacked and killed injured soldiers. There were members of the special naval forces. They were in that battle. That is cooperation. That is synergy. What else could you say? We've had synergy in recent times, but this incident is just an unfortunate error which must not happen again. I think that's where we should all head. Now, the Daily Independent newspaper. Customers grown as banks ration cash ahead of Christmas. Naira scarcity bites harder. ATMs, cash points run dry. Well, here we go again. And this government has more than seven months to solve this problem. We're all aware of this problem that by December, uh, something will expire, whether the old currency or the new. But to just go to the court and have an extension without solving the problem. I think it doesn't also tell well of what this administration has done so far concerning this Naira issue. Now we're talking of scarcity, and it is real. You can't get more than 20,000 Naira, uh, 20, Naira with a card. 
in a day. So if you don't have more than one card and you need more cash to do certain things, then you are stuck. Now the petrol stations are looking for cash at all costs because they are also doing business with those who do cash, uh, POS cash business. So we shouldn't be in this kind of situation. And Yemi Kadoso should know that his job is well cut out for him to deal with all these issues. So that Nigeria as a country, we don't want to get to the era when people are buying Naira with Naira again. That was a scandal. It must not be allowed to happen. Now, the Guardian newspaper, female genital mutilation. Government details as painful initiation to womanhood flourishes. Let's just look at the figures and I'll move on from that story. Nigerians with 19.9 million survivors account third highest number of women and girls who have undergone FGM, the abbreviation, worldwide. Now, three million girls, women, would have undergone FGM in Eboi, Ekiti, Imo, Oshu, and Oyo states in the last five years. That's a UNICEF figure. Only 13 states, Lagos, Oshu, Ondo, Ekiti, Bayelsa, Ogun, Delta, Eboi, Oyo, Imo, Edo, Cross River and River states have state laws that expressly prohibit FGM. Okay. Wait, just, um, well, other stories. Let me just look at some other stories uh, there. you come uh, in later. Now, there's another story there. One way local flight hits 200,000 Naira ahead of festive travels. Hmm. So that if you are planning your travel, no, that is the amount. 10 Lafayette Varsity students kidnapped by gunmen. Okay. Students are still being kidnapped. People are still being kidnapped. Nigeria is still insecure. The insecurity issue, President um, Bola Metinibu, is still very rife around the country. Okay. Ruben Rufa Ayo, if you have some time. We, we don't have time. I quickly want to say this. I think, and I would like to call for peace again. I think what Sheikh Gobi, the cleric, said, that oh, all of this is not a mistake. At the point in time when we are still investigating, when we don't have the facts, it's not right. And we shouldn't heat up the tension because I can see on social media, people are already attributing it to religious, I mean, or ethnic connotation. Please let everybody calm down. And Shegumi should not be saying all of this. He served in that Nigerian army. He was a captain in that army. Let's not divide the army. Let's not divide the nation. I beg. The Nigerian army is one. All right. We've run out of time. But just before we go, we pay tribute to uh, Franco Kori, yeah. Secretary General of the uh, uh, NOPENC, uh, the Petroleum uh, and Gas uh, Union, who played a major role during the struggle for Nigeria's return to civilian role. We pay tribute also to Benjamin Stefania, uh, the dub poet, actor, activist, writer, author of Face, author of Refugee Boy, one of the most important post-war British writers with Jamaican and British uh, heritage, who died at 65. But he was one of the most influential persons uh, in the world. Finally, the UN Secretary General has invoked Article 99, yes. asking the United Nations Supreme, uh, uh, Security Council to take responsibility. There is the United Nations Security Council, a body that can bite. Divided at this is, right down the middle, Will along the ideological US, lines. In this case, allow the UN Security Council to and do the need. Thank you. I think that should be the question.